Hi there. In this video I'm going to talk about exponential functions which are functions of the form y equal to a times b to the power of x. So a is multiplied by b to the power of x. Our variable x is a power And this is called an exponential function. Now when we're plotting an exponential function, we need to remember that b to the power of 0 is 1. In fact, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So if we think about our ordered pair of coordinates, when x is 0, okay, we get y equal to a times b to the power of 0, which is equal to a times 1, which is just equal to a. So when x is 0, our y coordinate is a. So in a function of this format, y equal to a times b to the power of x, we will always get this point on the graph. When x is 0, y is a. Now in some senses, this value a in our function is like a y-intercept. You'll have come across a y-intercept in linear functions. So whenever our exponential function crosses the y-axis, remember when it crosses the y-axis, it's when x is 0. So there's the x-axis down here. When x is 0, is where it crosses the y-axis. So this point here is 0, comma, a. So straight away, if we look at the graph of an exponential function, we can see where it crosses the y-axis, and then we can establish the value of this point, a. And so we know the coefficient of the b to the power of x. We know the first part of our exponential function. We know this a part. Once we know this a part, it's very easy to find the value of b as well, because we can sub in different values of x. Uh, typically, um, maybe x equal to 1 is a very good one to sub in, because b to the power of 1 is just b. b to the power of minus 1 is 1 over b. There's different ways we can find values for b. OK, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some graphs of exponential functions and just from looking at the graph, we're going to try and establish the value of a, which is the y-intercept, and the value of b. OK, let's do that now. Here we have two functions, two exponential functions. You can see they have this gradual rise, getting steeper and steeper. So let's look at the red one first. OK, let's call this one f of x. And what do we know about f of x? Well, let's look at where it crosses the y-axis. It crosses the y-axis at 1. So straight away, we know that the a part is just 1. So we have 1 times b to the x. And now the next thing we need to do is find another value where we know the x and the y-coordinate. So I'm going to look at this point here, where the x value is 1 and the y value is 3. So the f of x is 3, so that means we have 3 is the y coordinate is equal to 1 times b to the power of 1, which means that in fact 3 is equal to b. So f of x is the function 1 times 3 to the power of x which we would just write as 3 to the power of x. Now I showed you in another video how to plot the function f of x equal to 2 to the power of x. Uh, it's a good exercise for you to try and plot f of x equal to 3 to the power of x from scratch. So I would urge you to do that. Now the uh, green function, let's call this g of x. 
and its y-intercept is 2. So we know that g of x is equal to 2 times b to the x. OK, we need to find another value on the graph where we know the x and the y coordinates. So this value up here, when x is equal to 1, y is 6. So we get 6 as the output, and that's equal to 2 times b to the power of 1 which means that 6 over 2 is equal to b. So 3 is equal to b. And then we have g of x. g of x now is the function 2 times 3 to the power of x. So it's very similar to the other function, which is f of x is equal to 3 to the power of x. It's just twice it. So you can see that we just double the y coordinate each time. So when x was 0 we got 1 on the red function but 2 on the green function. When x was 1 we got 3 on the red function and 6 on the green function. Because g of x is simply twice f of x. Okay we've looked at two examples and in both of these examples the base was 3. Typically what you'll find if the base is bigger than 1 okay so let's uh, let's make another important point here if b which is the base that's risen to the power raised to the power if that's bigger than 1 then the function increases. Next we're going to look at a couple of examples where the function is decreasing here we have a function which is decreasing and we can see that the y-intercept is 1. There's the y-intercept. So let's call this function f of x. And we can say that this function is of the form f of x is equal to 1 times b to the x. Now because this function is decreasing I maintain that this value b, which is raised to the power of x, must be less than 1. It'll be between 0 and 1. So let's see if we can find a point on the graph which will help us find the value of b. Okay, this value here, when x is minus 1, y is 4. So we can say that the point minus 1 and 4 is on the function. So our y coordinate is 4. And that means our x-coordinate, our power, is minus 1. So that means that 4 is equal to 1 over b, which means that 4b is equal to 1, and b is equal to 1 over 4. So just as I suggested, b is a fraction, it's less than 1, and you will see that it must be decreasing because if we increase a quarter to the power of 2 we get 1 over 16 which is smaller again. A quarter to the power of 3 is 1 over 64 and so as x gets bigger, as the power gets bigger, the value of 1 over 4 to that power will get smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's why these exponential functions are decreasing if the base b is less than 1. So let's write out this function, f of x is equal to 1 over 4 to the power of x. Or we could write it as 0 0.25 to the power of x. Now there's a very important value of b which comes up a lot in mathematics. And that is when b, when b is equal to the letter e, which is equal to 2.718, and it goes on forever. It's a, an irrational number. In the same way as pi is, it has an infinite number of decimal places. But e is a very important number. It comes up a lot in natural phenomena and in probability and statistics. 
And this is a graph of the function f of x is equal to e to the power of x. You will see that the coefficient I have here is is again 1. And when x is 1, we just get e to the power of 1. So you can see the value of e here on the y-axis. If we go up from 1 to here, and there's the value there. It's about 2.718, etc., etc. So that's E. Okay, that concludes this video. I hope that this has helped. Um, the main points, I suppose, for you to glean from it is that the exponential functions will take two distinct shapes. They'll be either increasing if the base b is bigger than 1 and decreasing if the base b is between 0 and 1. And also the y-intercept gives us the value of a in our function. So our functions are always going to be of the form y equal to a times b to the x, but a is just the y-intercept. And then we, from that we can easily find b. Thanks for watching this video. That's all for now. Mm -hmm.